If you've ever used the Pathfinder tool in Adobe Illustrator and this happens, I've got a fix for you. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a visual artist and graphic designer. And welcome back to another episode of Illustrator Basics. This video will be all about compound paths and groups in Illustrator and the most profound difference between the two. So without any further ado, let's dive straight into the video. So if you have a group object like this piece of text here, for example, which is outlined and you want to punch out this rectangle from everywhere in here, this is what probably happens when you try to do this it'll only be applied to the letter D rather than the whole text object. So what happens here in the layer menu, you can see that one of them, the text object is actually a group consisting of multiple objects. Again, if we click on it, what it does is it selects the bottom one in this case, the letter D, and that's where the path finding will actually be applied to. And it will just delete the rest of it. So this is kind of the same thing that happens if you just select multiple objects in one go. So for example, if we right click on the group and then click on ungroup here, we now have a selection of multiple letters. And if we select all of them right now, and then again, use the minus front, it will just grab the top object and punch it out of the bottom object. So again, this is what we call a group object. You can actually group multiple objects yourself too, if you want that. So for example, let me just group these two rectangles together. All we need to do is select both of them, right click and click on group. Or you can also press Ctrl or Command G on your keyboard. So the main advantage of a group is that if you select a group, you can actually move around everything within that specific group. If you, let's say, want to select one of the individual shapes within a group, there's actually a few ways to do this. The first one is isolation mode. So if you double click on a group, you can see that the rest of the things inside our Illustrator project are now like grayed out. And that means that you cannot really affect them in this case. So for example, if I would select everything here by pressing Ctrl or Command A on my keyboard, you can see that everything in this case is everything that's isolated. So if we just change this color to orange, for example, this will leave out anything outside of that group. If you wanna exit isolation mode, you double click anywhere outside of the group, or you can just click this arrow at the top left right here. And now we're outside of isolation mode again. Besides the isolation mode, you can also use the direct selection tool, which is the filled in arrow right next to the selection tool here in the top left. You can select the selection tool with the letter V and you can select the direct selection tool with the letter A. And once you do that, you probably used to use this by selecting a specific anchor point on something. But if you just click on one object within a group, let's say this letter A here, let's say this letter A here, you can just move on that specific letter within that group. And now if we go back to the normal selection tool, you'll see that everything is still within that group and you can just still move everything around as a group. So that's kind of like a quicker way to do it rather than using the isolation mode, but both work fine in my opinion. And of course, the final way to do this is to just right click and click on ungroup, and then you'll have your two individual shapes again. It's worth mentioning that you can nest groups within other groups. So for example, if we just right click on this one and group it together, we can also make a group of everything that's in here by again going to group. And as you'll see in the layer menu now, there's now a hierarchy here between these groups. There is a problem with groups, however, and a problem that becomes rather apparent when you try to use the Pathfinder on it, like the example that I showed earlier. Let's demonstrate that one more time for if you forgot, so you don't have to scroll back in the video. I'm just gonna click on ungroup all, delete these rectangles, and this is basically the setup that we had earlier in the video where our text object is a single group and we want to punch this rectangle out of all of the letters with the pathfinder that's simply not possible and this is because like i said the pathfinder is ignoring the rest of the letters that are basically in between the top and the bottom object of this whole selection in our case the letter d and the bottom and a rectangle at the top so how do you counter this well i use compound paths. So you might be wondering what compound paths are and compound paths are basically paths in Illustrator where there's another path in that path, which basically cuts out a negative shape. It sounds a little bit more complicated than if I just show it to you. For example, if we have a little square right here, and I'm also going to grab an ellipse and make that ellipse here in the middle of this rectangle here. And if I now use the minus front pathfinder, 
just keep an eye on what happens with the ellipse and rectangle here because this now gets turned into a compound path. So a compound path is basically a square. You can see the outer lines of the path right here, which were just there already. And what makes this a compound path is if we just isolate this, so we'll double click and we'll just change the individual handles. We can move these paths around and this will basically be a negative of this shape. And what's weird about the compound pass is if we drag this out, as you can see, this now becomes a positive part because it goes over the border of that shape, if that makes sense. It sounds more complicated than it looks, but this is what we generally know as a compound path, a shape with a negative of another shape within that path. So how do we use compound paths to go back to our text example? Let me show you. The thing is compound paths can also be used without any of the shapes having to overlap. In our case, we have this group here full of letters. And as you can see, none of these letters are intersecting with each other. We do have some compound paths in here, like the letter B and the letter A. As you can see, there's a negative shape in there. But these individual shapes within the group aren't being seen as anything else. It's just a group of individual paths and compound paths. So if we go to object, compound path, make, or you can also press control or command A on your keyboard, what happens is this group gets turned into a compound path manually by me. And as you can see in the layer menu, the drop-down box of the group is now gone. So in the eyes of Illustrator, we now just have two objects that we can put in the pathfinder. So now if we click minus front, it will just create a stripe through our text, as you can see right here. And in the process, Illustrator turns everything back into a group. So for example, if we now use our direct selection tool, we can make the bottom part, I don't know, brown. Compound paths do also have downsides, however. Let's go back real quick. For example, you can now not individually select any letters anymore. As you can see, if I go into isolation mode and I want to move this letter L, we can still do that, I guess. But if we look at our drop down menu here in the layer menu, if you like to use things to select that, and it can sometimes get a little bit complicated visually, so you might want to use the layer menu to select your objects. That's not really an option anymore when you use compound paths. So before I show you another good use of compound paths, you might be wondering why not just use the shape builder tool? So one thing that the shape builder tool sometimes does is it kind of can create some really unnecessarily complicated shapes and it can also affect your performance a little bit, especially if you're doing a selection of a lot of different paths that are overlapping. So if you want to keep things clean and don't make any unnecessary anchor points, I tend to use the minus front option of the pathfinder rather than the shape builder tool. And usually these inconsistencies kind of come to light when you do an outline of your path, like the stroke around your path has like some jagged edges because of this. I try to generally stay away from that. And besides that, the actual process of this is actually fairly quick. So I'm going to just delete this and show you in real time how fast I do this when I don't really have to explain anything to someone. And there we go. So yeah, it's fairly easy. Of course, I didn't really, uh, as you can see, it's kind of messy here, but it was just to illustrate that with using shortcuts and stuff like that, you can actually do this in a matter of a couple of seconds. So finally, I want to show you another feature of compound paths that I personally really do love. And that's when you have like some flat illustrations and you want to have multiple colors within your composition. And let me show you an example. So what we have here is a vector image of a gun illustration. It's from my Dread Blaster spec. If you're interested in these kind of like space guns and vector assets to use in your artworks, you can find it on my web shop. I'll put a link in the description down below. Getting one will support the channel. Yada, yada, yada. Let's get back to the example. So what we have here is a gray background and this black selection. So I've outlined all of these strokes. So this basically does mean, let me just flatten this a little bit better, uh, that all of the fill strokes here are black. And let's say that I want to have the background of the gun a different color. It's a little bit hard to do that, I guess, because as you can see, the gun is transparent. The fill color is at least. So the way that I approach this is I select my group here. I'm going to copy it by pressing Control or Command C on my keyboard. And I'm going to go to Edit, Paste in Back or press Control or Command B on my keyboard. And this will make a copy in the exact same location as you can see right here. And we are going to use this in order to create that fill color. So the first thing we're going to do is turn this into a compound path. And as you can see, there's now a compound path in here. 
And the cool part about these compound paths is, as you can see, there's like a ton of holes in there. So it kind of makes sense that this is a compound path already. Well, you can actually release this now. So if you go back to compound path under the object menu and you click on release, or you can just click on Alt, Shift, Control, 8, or Option, Shift, Command, 8 if you're on a Mac, and click on release, every single negative shape within that compound path gets released and turns into a normal shape. So let me just change the background color of it to yellow. And this is kind of like makes sense now. Let me just hide the top one, the one that we didn't really use. And as you can see, this is already like a full on filled shape. And now we, all we need to do is just unite this with the pathfinder and we can just unhide the group right here. And now we can just individually change the background color, the stroke color and everything in between because we turned this into a compound path. So I hope this video gave you a good insight into what compound paths and group are and which one to use in which specific situation and if you have any questions about them please leave them down in the comments below also if you have any tutorial suggestions if you want to learn any more illustrator basics or things that you're stuck with let me know in the comments down below because i read all of the comments because let's be honest my channel is not that active anymore and i would love to help you out I would love for you to subscribe to my channel so you'll never miss a future tutorial because right at this point i have hundreds of tutorials on my channel already. So you're probably good for a while. But of course, if you subscribe, you'll never miss a future one. If you want to further support the channel, check out my web store where I sell a lot of texture packs, vector packs, and much, much more. The link for that will be in the description down below. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.